Hey everyone, I'm out doing some chores today. Thought I might take you along. We're out here by the woods. I noticed a couple weeks ago we had a elm tree that decided to hang out about a 45 degree angle from the woods and uh, warned the wife and the kids not to walk near this and you know make sure they stayed out of the way. And good thing I did too, because here, just about a month later, it did finally go ahead and fall on its own. Check this out. So coming in along the edge of the woods here, on actually a path that's now covered in some of these small pawpaw saplings. And you can see it actually had some pretty shallow roots here where it was growing right here along the path and didn't seem to anchor in very well. And it was growing right up next to this other tree. And you can see where the other tree didn't really have a good bark coverage, but very cool looking way it grew in here. Obviously not the same species or they might have tried to graft themselves to each other or something like that, but just growing completely independently, but right around the tree here. It's really cool to check out, but definitely part of the reason why it didn't have a good anchoring in the soil and clearly it lost out of the two trees. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this up. Might be just big enough that we could get a couple boards here. We'll see about that once I get into cutting this up, but I'll go ahead and get that done. It's been a few weeks since I cut up that elm, but I've got it down here. I've got everything situated here that I can run the mill today. I want to run these through, see what I can get. I'm thinking maybe even some miniature slabs that I can make some small pieces out of. And uh, that might be my direction I go in today. We'll see once I get cutting. But I've got four of these total varying lengths for sure. Uh, this first one that I'm going to cut through is the largest. It was from the trunk. And it's pretty close to nine and a half, ten feet. I haven't actually measured it out, but just judging based upon how long it is compared to the mill here, I think we'll be able to just get right through it. And that's about a 10 foot limitation there. So I'm going to go ahead and load this up the ramp and uh, see what we get out of this thing.
I've pointed this out in another video, but what I like to do is rewrap the winch cord here around the log itself once we've got it up off the ramps and it's actually on the bunks up here. I like to just get that in there, extra security for this not rolling back off of the mill. And it also helps me just wedge this up real tight against the log stops back here. And then that way I can clamp it in, keep it nice and tight as we go. And that really helps me just maneuver the log a lot easier. The other thing you'll notice is this log is definitely not a perfect cylinder. These two ends are both touching on their respective bunks, but the one over here is lifted up off of the bunk. And that's just because the nature of this log and its shape, you can try and make sure that it touches but the majority of the log down here is all straight uh, in the way that I've got it clamped up here. So I'm really trying to preserve mostly of that length there. The end down here is worse up top, not quite as pretty, uh, but it's not the section that I'm really looking to save. And I'll show it to you from the back here. You can see that the wood that might be worth something is gonna be underneath that cavity back here. So when we cut in, if we're gonna get anything nice that might run the length of it, it's gonna be from the bottom section here, which is gonna be more the middle of the log down there. So we're gonna go ahead and keep it like this. I might get a little bit more vibration in the log as I cut up here, but overall, I don't think it's gonna to be too much of a problem since it's nice and snug back here uh, from those log clamps. And I'll double check that when I take the winch cable off before I do the cut, since obviously I don't wanna cut that cable and we'll just see how well we think this is going to work. I might have to tighten it up just a little bit more, but once that's nice and snug, we'll go ahead and start taking our first cuts off the top here. Just gotta stop and say how gorgeous this actually is. You can see that stark difference between the sapwood and the heartwood here. Very beautiful stuff. Well, if the house wasn't so far away, I'd go get a little bit more water. But you can see just how beautiful this wood is. These are probably the best two that I've got. These are both two inch slabs. So I think we'll be able to make some really pretty furniture pieces out of these. Not sure exactly what that'll be yet, but really gorgeous wood. Awesome contrast and the brown and white here, the sapwood to the heartwood there. Really excited to be able to make stuff with this. It was definitely worth the effort, at least at this point, assuming it dries well also. Definitely worth the effort in cutting these up even though they're a bit smaller pieces here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get some of these next ones up here, see what else we can get.
All right, well, here's everything that that little one yielded. Obviously some varying amounts of usefulness depending on how we do end up using it. Quite a bit of live edge on that if we wanna have that for an accent for something. It's about an inch thick. Another piece here, I don't know that I'll get anything out of that, uh, but maybe uh, if we want some piece with a lot of live edge <laughs> on it. Uh, same with this piece here, uh, but very cool on top. So could potentially use it for something. The last two pieces I made here, this is an inch and a half thick piece right here, in case we need kind of a more structural piece to whatever we're building. And this is a three by three. So I've been thinking about some small furniture pieces that might want to utilize some of that. I wanted to capture no bark, but yet some sapwood. And I think I pretty well did what I wanted to there. Won't necessarily need the whole length of it or anything like that, but just wanted to kind of have some fun with that see what I could get so we'll see how those dry and see what we can use them for but that'll be it for that one on to the next More gorgeous wood in here. Couldn't quite get uh, two inch slabs out of this, but I got two one and a half inch. So definitely still can make some good stuff out of this. Really beautiful wood. Lots of beautiful reds and browns in there. Really excited to see what we can do with all of this. And let's get that last one done. So the first two cuts are here. This one here is just bark on the other side. And then this one here is nice, but a bit of a curved piece for sure. So it'll be interesting to see what we can make with that. Might be a nice accent piece for something. Moving back here, got another piece here with bark on it. Might be able to cut some smaller pieces out of that with the table saw later. Uh, this one really will just be probably firewood uh, at this point. Not sure what else I might do with it. I'll hang on to it for now. And this final piece over here, this is about four and a quarter uh, each direction, other than just a small little bit of uh, bark on this end and on the other end. But other than that, nice solid piece. I really actually like the idea of having just a little bit of sapwood here with the heartwood. Gives it a really nice color contrast. 
and get on the other side of that. Okay, I think it just gives it a ton of character to be able to see the edge of the sapwood here. It's exactly what I was going for. I'm gonna let this dry like this and uh, hopefully it won't bend or warp too much. Otherwise I might shave it down just a little bit more depending on how it comes out. But I'd really like to see that be a, a leg for an end table I wanna do. We'll see if I get a chance to make that or not, depending on how all this dries. Uh, but very, very cool looking stuff. Very excited to have cut all of this this weekend. Sure excited to see what we can make out of it. While I'm still an absolute amateur when it comes to milling and creating furniture pieces and all that, I'm having an absolute blast doing it. If you'd like to see some of the other things that I've milled, be sure and check out this playlist here. Or if you want to see some of the projects that I've made here on the homestead, be sure and check out this video next. Thanks for watching.